What good with it, y'all? Today, I'll be taking y'all through a video I did uh, quite some time ago, so I'm just going to do an updated version of it. Today, I'll be showing y'all how to prep shoes to be painted, specifically a Jordan 1 mid today. And I know this video is going to help you, so go ahead and hit me with that like now. Now let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we gonna do, of course, is take out the laces. All right, we got these laces out, man. So with paint shoes, prep is key. So the thing you wanna conscious, I'm up thing you want to concentrate the most on is your prep because if you don't prep your shoe the correct way all the artwork will be for nothing and there are certain areas on the shoe that you really want to concentrate on and put the most work in the whole shoe is important but there are certain areas on the shoe that really need extra attention okay so what I like to do is I like to start off go ahead and hit it with the acetone all over the shoe Make sure when you are acetone in your shoe that you get all of the areas of the shoe. Every one, every little piece, every piece of, oh my goodness, every piece of leather or whatever that you're gonna be painting, you need to make sure you hit it with that acetone. Okay, so the next step will be the sanding process. And with the sanding process, the thing you wanna concentrate the most on is getting the parts that's gonna flex the most. So the high creasing areas in a Jordan 1 mid or a Jordan 1's period is around here, this toe area right up in here. Those are the high creasing areas. And if you don't prep those properly, it's almost 100% going to crack. Another thing that you want to look out for and what you want to concentrate on is your areas where just depending on your design, if you're using stencils, if you're using stencils on any part of the shoe, you really want to concentrate on that part because with those stencils, it's easy for that paint to peel up along with those stencils. So you want to have you a good foundation, a good prep in wherever you're going to put those stencils at, no matter where the shoe is, what, no matter where on the shoe that you're going to be putting your stencils on. So, for me right now, of course, the high traffic area right here, you know, high creasing, that part right here, I got stencils right here, I'm gonna be having a stencil right here, and I believe right here and a little bit back there. So, basically, we gotta concentrate really hard on all of these areas on our sanding process. I like to start off with a 400 grit sandpaper, move up to a 600 grit, then 800, and possibly a 1200 if I need it. So, let's get into the sanding part. Okay, for me, when I'm sanding, I like I like to use just like just the paper. You can use whatever you want to use. There's different tools and stuff like that that you can use. But for me personally, um, I, I just like to use the um, the the paper kind. And what I like to do is go in like circular motions. I like to think of it like um, as a car, like if you're painting a car. If you ever watch somebody paint a car in the prep process within that, that would teach you all you need to know basically about prepping a shoe. So I like to go in like circular motions and just kind of like make it a little uniform so I make sure that I hit every single part that I need to hit. Now when you're working with this paper, I feel like it's easier in my opinion to get every crack in this creasing area right here. So I just fold it around my finger and I just work it in there. I make sure I get every part of it. And another thing like with the stitching 
in my opinion, um, I don't I don't like to go super hard on the stitching because I just feel like that makes the the custom look a little sloppy. You can take like a, a um a lighter or something like that to that stitching to make the uh, fraying a little bit more easy on the eye. But for me, I just like to rub it across the stitch. I don't like to have to go like super hard on it because I feel like that's gonna fray it too much. So just rub it across that stitching. That way you get a little roughness to it. You know what I mean? So, so that, that paint can have something to bite on to, something to latch on to, and it may even seep into the stitching. That's what I like to go for. But I'm just gonna hit this other area right here, the high creasing area. And this one is pretty easy to get into. Okay, so after you finish, you know, your sanding process and all of that good stuff, you got one final thing to do, which is acetone the whole shoe over again. With me, I like to do probably about two passovers of it. I like to go ahead, you know, get all the debris off and everything that the um, the sanding has left behind, you know, this leather and uh, dust and all that kinds of good stuff. Get all that off first and then, you know, attack it one more time to make sure everything is off and all the factory finish is off of there so your paint can adhere to it the most easy and proper way. Now let's get it. Okay, now we got everything done, man. I'm gonna answer a very frequently asked question, um, which is, what? how do I know I prepped the shoe properly? How do I know what signs should I look for? And honestly, that's a very broad question. Uh, there's a lot of answers to it, but the main thing I can tell you that has helped me is it's not necessarily a look, it's a feel. The shoe, when it has this factory finish on there, and when it hasn't been sanded and stuff like that, it kind of feels a little slick. You know what I'm saying? You can rub your finger across there, and it feels like your finger just glides. But after you finish your prep process, if you've done it well, it feels like it's like it's more grip. You know what I'm saying? You can actually like, you know what I'm saying? It's not just a smooth. Like I can't even rub my finger across it without it making any kind of noise or whatever. So it's more of a feel. Um, in terms of what do you see, I would say it's more of a matte finish instead of uh, maybe like a little bit glossy or something like that. Because most shoes have like a, a small hint of gloss to them when you have that factory finish on there. So I would say look for more so of a matte finish. After you've done your sanding and, and acetone and all that kind of stuff, I would say look for more of a flat finish and also, you know, that, that feel test. It's gonna feel, you if you prep your shoes and you have been doing this for a while, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a, it's a certain texture, it feels like, it's still smooth, but it's just like, it's a grip to it. That's gonna be that same bite that you need for that paint to adhere to your leather. So if this video has helped you in any way, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and like the video. I don't even care if you subscribe. You ain't gotta subscribe, but if you wanna subscribe, you can go ahead and subscribe. But make sure you like the video if it helped you out, man. Um, if you were entertained or maybe you just like watching people prep shoes, let me know in the comments. I continue to prep shoes. I got to do it every day. Um, but I appreciate y'all watching, man. And it's your buddy Cadet. I'ma catch you in the next one. Yeah.